In section 7.2, we're going to be multiplying polynomials. That means any, like monomial times a monomial, a binomial times a binomial, a monomial times a binomial. But we're going to learn three separate things. Multiplying binomials using the FOIL method and multiplying binomials and trinomials. So first off, let me explain something to you. 3 times 4, which is 12, is multiplying polynomials. This is where you take a one monomial times another monomial. If we multiplied another monomial times another monomial, you've done this as well. 3x squared times negative 2x to the third is negative 6x to the fifth. You've multiplied polynomials before. But today, you're going to be multiplying monomials, I'm sorry, binomials times binomials. For example, if I gave you this, x plus 2 times 3, this is a monomial times a binomial. And you would distribute. That would give you 3x plus 6. You've done that before. But today, you're going to add one more term onto this. Now this you would still distribute, but now you're going to have another term, and you have to multiply everything in one parenthesis times everything in another. Sometimes people call it like double distributing, so like here you're not just distributing the 3, you're also distributing the x, and that's what we're going to be learning today. Example number 1. You're going to multiply binomials using the distributive property. Now, we're just going to be using a method that I'm not going to talk about what it's called yet, but I want you to understand that you're just distributing is all you're doing when you're multiplying. So in part A, I want you to write this down. x plus 2 times x plus 5. You are multiplying everything in the first parenthesis to everything in the second parenthesis. You basically are taking the x and you're distributing the x. And then you're going to distribute the 2. So you're going to take x times x, and don't ever forget x times x. x times x, you add the powers. gives you x squared. Then you take x times 5 and get 5x. Then you take 2 times x. So we've just distributed the x. x times x, x times 5. You then are taking 2 times x and 2 times 5. That gives you 2x plus 10. The next step is you always must simplify like terms, and you must put it in descending order in standard form. So x squared, the 5x plus 2x, combine into 7x plus 10. So your answer is a trinomial, x squared plus 7x plus 10. B, x plus 3 times x minus 4. We're first going to take the x and distribute the x x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Then I distribute the 3. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. I combine my like terms, and I get x squared minus 1x minus 12. So my answer is x squared minus x minus 12. You can also multiply using a table, which I really doubt anyone's going to do in the long run, but this is still something you can use. A table would look something like this. You are multiplying 2x minus 3 times x plus 5. And so you would take 2x times x and get 2x squared negative 3 times x and get negative 3x, 2x times 5 and get 10x, negative 3 times 5 and get negative 15. The 2x squared goes first. These combine into plus 7x, and in descending order or in standard form, it's 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. This is called the FOIL method. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not I don't like calling it FOIL because it's just doing what we, we do. We multiply. We take the product of two binomials. 
This only works with two binomials. That's it. And it's basically what you just did in example one. FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. So you would multiply the first terms and get x squared. You would multiply O, the outer term, so x times x, and then x times 2. We've already done this. x times 2 is 2x. Then the inner terms, 1 times x is 1x, or just x. And your last terms, 1 times 2, which is 2. So you put them together, first, outside, inside, last. You combine the inner terms, 2x plus 1x, and your answer is 2x, or I'm sorry, x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, in the first example, we're just going to do this together. We're just going to do what we did in example 1. x times x, x times negative 6. So x times x is x squared minus 6x. Now we distribute the negative 3. You're distributing a negative 3. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 6 is plus 18. We combine, we get x squared minus 9x plus 18. I want you to also look at it this way, because this really, I mean, this is how you do it. If you, when you use the FOIL method, this is what you did. x times x gives me my x squared. Negative 6 times x gives me my negative 6x. Negative 3x and plus 18. You did FOIL without actually even knowing you were doing FOIL. The next one, let's multiply. 2x times 3x. What is that? What is 2x times 3x? It's not 6x. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Don't ever forget that. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 1 times 3x is plus 3x. And 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. I combine my middle terms, and I get 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. Now in this example, we can't use FOIL because we don't have two binomials. But we still follow the basic rules as distributing. All you're going to do is you're going to take the x, and you're going to distribute it to all three terms. If there were eight terms here, you take the x and distribute it eight times. And then you do the same thing with the five. You distribute everything in the first set of parentheses to everything in another set. So let's distribute the x. x times x is x squared. No, not x squared. x to the third. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I now combine everything in descending order based on the powers, or the, the exponents. x to the third is my biggest power. Negative 3x squared plus 5x squared is plus 2x squared. Negative 2x minus 15x is negative 17x, and the negative 10 comes down. In standard form, this is x to the third plus 2x squared minus 17x minus 10. All right, in example five, no joke, this is actually going to be a problem we're doing. Look at this. In hockey, a goalie behind the goal line can only play a puck in the trapezoidal region. Write a polynomial that represents the area of a trapezoid, or the trapezoidal region. Then we want to find the area of the trapezoid region when the shorter base is 18 feet. I love these type of problems. And I'm sure you are not going to like them. But, too bad, you can do it. So, what would I need to do first? What do you think I'm going to have to do? to write a polynomial that represents the area of the trapezoidal region. You're going to have to know what the area of a trapezoid is. A equals 1 half B sub 1 plus B sub 2 times the height. 
So what do we know here? Well, we know the area is 1 half times the base. Well, if you look here, here's one base. Here's the other. So that would be x plus x minus, or I'm sorry, x plus 10 times the height. Well, the height's right here, x minus 7. So this is going to give me a equals 1 half times x plus x is 2x plus 10 times x minus 7. Now, you can either take half of 2x plus 10 now and then multiply the two binomials, or you can multiply the two binomials and then take half of everything. Personally, I think it's easier to get rid of the half first. So if I distribute the half, it's going to just be x plus 5 times x minus 7. I want you to FOIL this on your own. Multiply these two binomials on your own. Pause the video and see what you get. Pause the video. All right. If you did it right, you would get x squared plus, I'm sorry, that's not right, x squared minus 7x plus 5x minus 35, which would simplify into x squared minus 2x minus 35. That right there is the expression or the equation for the area of a trapezoid. Now I want to find the area when x is 18, right here. The shorter base is 18. Well, right here it says the shorter base is x. So that means x is 18. I take 18 and plug it into all of this. 18 squared minus 2 times 18 minus 35. And if you calculate that, it would be 253 square feet.